Live from downtown Vancouver at the Vancouver Film School campus, it's time for EP Live. Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool. And boy, do we have a jam-packed episode for you today. Thank you for joining us here on EP Live. And remember, you can always come and join us on location live at the VFS Cafe and see us in person, which would be awesome. Uh, we're at 390 West Hastings in Vancouver, B.C. We've got a great show to get to and lots and lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, but first, let's go to our rundown, which today is dedicated to uh, Dorothy Fontana, also known as DC Fontana. Montana, uh, who passed away recently. She wrote some of the best episodes, and I know that uh, out of, uh, which ones? Of Star Trek. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I skipped right over the Star Trek part. But Blake Siefkin is particularly um, bummed out that DC Fontana has left us. So rest in peace and thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, also to Callie and Jordan Squad. I uh, love these videos, Vic. I always watch your TV show at this time of year. And so happy you continued our holiday uh, videos at the end of the year on YouTube. We have a blast making those. And we've got a lot of rocket and ray gun stuff coming your way. So uh, stay tuned. We'll have some uh, information about how you can be involved on Friday's show. But right now, let's get uh, started with Callie and Jordan Squad and DC Fontana's Rundown. Death Stranding has been delivered on time, but that doesn't mean we should forget about another Hideo Kojima franchise. The big screen Metal Gear Solid movie is continuing its infiltration of Hollywood. The film's writer and director Jordan Vaught Roberts, who's been attached to the project for several years, has announced that they've just finished the latest draft of the script, and like the games, it's filled with military surrealism and Kojima-style quirkiness. Voight, is it Vaught or Voight? Voight? Voight Roberts? Okay, I haven't met him, so I don't know how to say it. Voight Roberts adds that he's meeting with an, ac an actor soon, and although he hasn't given names, the fact that they're already talking with potential stars indicates that the film could begin pre-production in the near future. It'd be pretty rad to work David Hayter into this one, what I'm saying. You know, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I mean, he's he's an accomplished actor. He's done some stuff, and he knows the whole ins and outs of uh, of the movie business, and he knows the, the game franchise really well. Uh, Boy Roberts, you should do that. Come on, man, you got to make that happen. Super psyched to see uh, how you know Metal Gear Solid and Solid Snake and that whole universe uh, translates to the movie screen. But since it was always conceived as an homage to movies, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be all right, and it's in good hands. I like this guy. Uh, he's a huge gamer, and he totally gets what we're all looking for. He's a massive fan. He's a, he's one of the the hidden characters in uh, Death Stranding as well, which is really cool. And it's crazy that Hideo Kojima is still, is still kind of involved with all of this stuff as well. All right, now, one of the creepiest survival horror franchises is going to let you suffer with your friends. Outlast 1 and 2 developer Red Barrels has announced the, Outla uh, the Outlast Trials, an all-new multiplayer entry in the franchise. No footage has been released yet, but the developers say the gameplay will be based around co-op with up to four players, although there will still be the option of playing it solo for all of you single-player enthusiasts. The Outlast Trials is still in the early stages of development, so don't expect it to jump out anytime soon. Red Barrels has also stated that they're also working on a full-fledged Outlast 3, but no word on when that will arrive. And Outlast is a game where you are completely underpowered, right? And every you've got to survive uh, all means of and and uh, you know variations of horror, and it's completely frightening. So this is almost like Left 4 Dead without uh, weapons, which I, I like the idea of that. You know, just basically stay alive for as long as you can, be as uh, as smart and cagey as you possibly can. Uh, but they're going to get you anyways. Um, I'm a big fan of this uh, Red Barrels company. They're very cool, and I'm, and I'm really glad that they've had so much success with Outlast, and uh, so much more is coming. So congrats on that. Um, psyched to check this one out. All right, now Fox and their new parent company, Disney, want to take audiences back to the planet of the apes. Spoiler alert, it's Earth. Uh, a new entry in the long-running science fiction franchise is in the works. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the new film is being developed by the Maze Runner director Wes Ball, although it's unclear if it will serve as a follow-up to the recent reboots or harken back to the original film series. This makes Apes the first big Fox franchise to be revived by Disney following their acquisition of the studio earlier this year. Disney executives had previously stated that under their leadership, they want Fox to focus less on original IPs and instead double down on established franchises like Planet of the Apes. 
It remains to be seen what Disney will do with other big Fox properties like Alien and Die Hard. And I have heard that Alien is a, uh, uh, you know, a major uh, part of what's coming up from Disney and Fox in the future. I don't know if Ridley Scott is going to be a big part of that, but if there is more Alien coming. And, and hopefully it will be all right, because the last bunch of Alien things have been terrible. Um, I don't know how you beat what uh, was just done with the last Planet of the Apes trilogy. It was about as good as you can get with that subject matter. And I've seen all of these Apes movies except for the Tim Burton one. I've tried to watch that like two or three times. I always fall asleep halfway through. It's terrible. It's such a bad movie. I can't believe how bad it is. The production values are great, but it's just so goddamn boring. It's brutal. But uh, the... The recent Apes flicks have been amazing, and if you haven't seen War for the Planet of the Apes, because it felt like they were coming out fast and furious, that's another overdone franchise, uh, they were doing so many of them that it felt like, oh my god, slow down, but War for the Planet of the Apes was amazing, and I remember seeing that with Johnny, and we were both completely blown away and moved, and you know, everybody's work in that film was awesome, so I don't know how they topped that. You know, certainly there's lots of ways in to Planet of the Apes. You can make it a little more campy, a little bit more fun, but it's it's tough to beat the emotional undercurrents of the last three films. They were fantastic movies. That's a great franchise. So, um, you know, and honestly, like, it's led to, led to Matt Reeves ending up uh, directing the next Batman. It was so good. All right. Uh, it really looks like Valve is making good on their promise to start making games again. Following the announcement of the new VR game, Half-Life Alex, news has come in that Valve has even more new projects in development. Their new subsidiary, Firewatch developer Campo Santo, has announced that they've moved over many of their developers to help out on Half-Life Alex, as well as several other unannounced Valve projects. Oh, I see what's happening here. They're sharing all of the uh, developer assets that they have. The downside is that this means that the upcoming Campo Santo game in the Valley of Gods has been pushed back, but the good news is that we're getting more Valve games overall. Other notable Valve franchises include Portal, Left 4 Dead, and Team Fortress, so there's no telling what they might revisit next. And yeah, Valve's got a whole bunch of stuff on there um, in their portfolio, and it would be great to see a bunch of these games come back. Um, would love new Portal, would love new uh, Left 4 Dead, but honestly, we want more Half-Life. Half-Life Alex is great, but it's not going to be a game that everybody is going to play. And um, I hope that Valve has an answer for that. You know, it's an incredible universe. But I also, honestly, I want to see Valve uh, deliver something of that sort of production pedigree that's brand new and blow us away with that, you know? I love that they've been playing with the technology and getting into VR, and I love the lab on uh, Vive. It was amazing. Uh, But I would really like to see them blow our minds with a whole new thing that isn't derivative. It isn't connected to the Valve-verse. I just coined that. You can use it. Uh, But, uh, uh, yeah, super psyched about that. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about Valve and Steam, I think, when I get into the Stadia conversation, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, But, uh, yeah, I'm psyched to see that we are talking about Valve making video games again. Doesn't that make you happy, Blake? You should see him. He's almost got a smile. It's amazing. Oh, there he's smiling. I got him to, I got him to smile, everybody. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for our rundown today. Now let's take a look back at this day and everything cool. Welcome to this day and everything cool for December 4th. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? On this day in 2012, Ubisoft took players to an island paradise filled with action and mayhem. The open world shooter Far Cry 3 was released in North America following its release in Europe and Asia a few days earlier. The game thrust players into the role of an American college student who finds himself stranded on a tropical island controlled by a deadly militia, forcing him to fight in order to survive. Developer Ubisoft Montreal wanted to create a story that would explore the darker aspects of humanity, showing the lengths normal people can go when their life is on the line. The story is made all the more chilling thanks to the breakout performance of actor Michael Mando as the main villain Voss. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? On the gameplay side, Ubisoft made Far Cry 3 a lot more fast-paced than its predecessor, Far Cry 2, striking a near-perfect balance between realism and escapism. Ubisoft also took an idea from their open-world franchises like Assassin's Creed and filled the world of Far Cry 3 with loads of side activities, which gave it plenty of replayability. The game received critical acclaim, becoming one of the best of the year and selling almost 5 million copies in its first six months. Several sequels and spin-offs have followed, but Far Cry 3 remains the high point of the franchise. 
All right, you guys, two big trailers have dropped since last we met, and I will be talking about that, so save your comments and your questions for Let's Play and Chat. But right now, it's time to take a look at a uh, review that I was just able to complete. It is for Need for Speed Heat.